Hello! Welcome back to... Your Mom Gay Podcast. Abstract Thinking. Your Mom Gay Podcast. <laughs> um, this is basically like our YouTube channel. It's new. Uh, it's This is Matt Legere from Matt's Money Morning Podcast. I don't know if you remember that. I'm Nick, I'm Nick McGinnis, the, one of the most, if not, I am the most reoccurring guest on that. And, uh... On Matt's Monday Morning Yeah, podcast. you were on, like, 13 times. 11. Or some, or some shit like shit that. straight, Matthew. Oh, it's 11, you th- dick. There's only 11 of them? Yeah, we, I was on 11 of them. I thought we had, like, 12, at least. Maybe 12 now. I don't remember. You were on the last one, number 40. Yep. I can't believe we made 40 of those. It's, like, 58 hours of content. Yep. <laughs> you had a mom game like, podcast? It's, like... Two days and ten hours of, <laughs> of us talking about shit. So hopefully we'll have even more of that on the new YouTube channel. But, I mean, definitely think we should keep to a more intellectual conversation, though. Yeah, well... That's we, what makes interesting content. We would veer off so fast on that show, bro, and just talk about, like... Like... Random nonsense... Yeah, probably. <laughs> like blowjobs? Like, <laughs> I mean, that came up often. I mean, fucking Donald With Trump. You? Donald Trump's getting one, getting one from Star Daniels, most likely, right now, so. Damn, damn, damn. Oh, shit, bro. Russian collusion? Don't you think that's all a bunch of bullshit, bro? They think that the Russians elected Trump? I think that's fucking nonsense. I don't think it's true. I think it's just a liberal uh, scheme. That's the best word I can think of. It's like, well, hold on. Let me preface this, because I I want everybody to know that I am not a right-winger. And I am. I'm I'm a a right-winger. I'm a leftist who's critical of the Democratic Party. That's what what it is. And I'm a right-winger that's critical of the Republican Party. Yeah. So we're not, like, establishment voices in the slightest. We're actually, like, the complete opposite. In case you couldn't tell. But, yeah, I think he'll come to find that we both make fun of the Democrats. And he makes fun of the Democrats as much as any Republican would. And I make fun of the Republicans as much as any Democrat would. Yeah, so it's like we're not partisan hacks like some people, you know. Um, Because, honestly, I hate that about, like, media. Even It's even in, like, new media is, like, the tribalism of, like, partisan bullshit. I think the two-party system is very uh, moronic. It's fucked up. Or it's, it's, system. it's a system that's turned corrupt. It's a system that's very easily turned corrupt, too, Matthew. Well, all systems are easily turned corrupt. Yes, but certain, ones are, that. certain ones are easier, and a two-party system is, for example, easier to corrupt than a one-party well, system. What was I saying? Wait, one party? So we gotta argue about that. We can't just have one party. We need, like, many. We need a lot. Feel like the that's... answer isn't two. Two is better than one. No, I, I, I wouldn't think so. Like that's that. like totalitarianism. The, the most... You have one political party. The most. The more <laughs> parties you add, the more corrupt, the easier the corruption is going to seep in. But that, that, that doesn't mean it's be- not better than one party state. I'm not saying one party state is good. I'm <laughs> just saying if you're talking about corruption in, the, in this situation, a one party system would be bu- significantly better than a two party system. I just think we need to get money out of politics. So that legal bribery isn't legal anymore. We need an amendment. That's what you need. Money it keeps the balance of all things, Matthew. We need money. No, it doesn't keep the balance. It keeps people's pockets filled. Then it keeps balance. No. Balance is not the same as order. Yeah, exactly my point. Money does not bring order. Money brings balance. What do you mean by that? It makes it... But you realize that the whole reason why the two-party system is corrupt is because money is in politics, right? Yes. Like, that's the but whole money, point. Money is going to be in politics anyway. Because, <laughs> you know, that's how a government no, you can, runs. No, no, it's not what I mean. Like, what I mean is, like, special interest groups, we need to make it so they can't pay, like, donors. Like, just abolish the donor shit. Get rid of that. You're not going to be able to, you're not going to have a lot of politicians that are going to be able to run for... Places in government. All you are if you, money. if you, you are if you completely extract that from the system altogether, because that's the only reason why people can't now is because they're not rich enough. We should have an actual system that's democratic, where if I wanted to, I would go in and run and have equal chance of winning, just based on ideas, as some fucking 
billionaire trust fund, kid, bro. That's what I want to see in this country. I, I want mean, that, like, total freedom. I mean, yes. But Ted, you have to be able to fund your uh, your campaign by getting things on, like, TV. You're going to have to be able to fund your campaign by doing setting up things called... Same things like speeches and shit like that. You need to have funding to run for. Well, yeah, I, 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 I guess, but see, I have like these these thoughts and like views of like shit that we could do better that has never been tried, and that confuses people because they think that like when I criticize things, like especially what I really mean when I say this is capitalism, they think that I'm like defending other systems that are already in existence but like that's not what i want i want to see something that's new that's never been done yeah but i mean for right now until somebody creates something you know better than capitalism which is hard to do creating an economic system is a very difficult task it's a very large task to say the least but until then capitalism is the making the best out of a bad situation i think See, you're like a realist, and I'm like an idealist. It's like the, that's what's going on. I think that's on. what separates the left from the right. Left is idealism, right is realism. Yeah, in a way, yeah. Well, it's two di- very different ways of thinking. Yep. It's like t- it's like two different brain types. <laughs> Definitely. But I think we need both of them. It's like they work in synergy because like you have one force that pulls into new ground and like creates and another force that like actually keeps the machine running so it can go forward, you know what I mean? See what I'm saying there? It's like coexistence. Cause like politically, Jordan Peterson explains this. I have a complicated relationship with Jordan Peterson. It's like, I'm like his pupil that's like Rebellion. He's, rebellion. he's like the sidious to play guys, basically. Sure. For, and layman's star. But I'm not going to kill him. Like, <laughs> I appreciate that he's here. Um, like, the need for the right and the left. The left is like, it's there to say, like, inequality destabilizes the system, right? And the right is there to say, like, oh, this is working right now. You know, like... I mean, liberals start companies and then conservatives will run them. That's what, like, that's what I mean. Yeah. But I mean, if you're going to say that conservatives are good at running things, that, that implies... That's not really what I'm saying, though. It's like they serve a different function in the discourse, is what I mean. Yes, but still, you're going to need, you know, funding and, ex- and economy to... Run things. Nobody's saying we don't need an economy. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but, I'm saying, but what I'm trying to explain is that you're coming up and hating on capitalism. I'm not saying you're like. Which there's a need to do that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but that's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to like... say you're supporting communism, but I'm going to specifically. Well, not specifically, but I'm going to hate on communism. Specifically be like, yeah, but we can't do that. Yeah. Which is fair as well. There's also a need. For somebody to make that statement. See, I'm not. I'm not going to give you the right answer. I'm just going to point out the wrong answer. To yeah. You. So I mean, it's weird when it like goes into the that territory because like I can turn into almost like a centrist apologist. Like I like empathize with the liberals because they're like comfortable in the capitalism system. So they don't. They know like other shit that's been tried. That they're like, wait a second though, we that's can't stupid. do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the left is divided. See, I mean, I kind of wanted to hit on socialism because liberals nowadays try to bring up socialism as an uh, option other than capitalism. Well, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I mean... In our society. That's all you got to see for socialism rising again is, like, she, she won an election. <laughs> like, yeah. But <laughs> if you're going to... If you're going to say there's something wrong with capitalism, don't then point out probably something worse than capitalism (laughs) right but that's not what people like her are doing you know it's it's in fact those are the people that i was trying to like talk about when i said like liberals is like the social democrats because they're not they're capitalists they're not socialists they just think that we should have 
basically like a capitalist system that runs more like a socialist system you know it's like spectrumatic to them it's like so they want an uh, an uh, a competitive economic system well giving away free things no it's not giving away free things it's what well, it is kind of give no, but nothing's free. It's taxes. Yeah, exponentially it's social high services. Taxes. It's exponentially high taxes. Exponentially high taxes. I'm for a lower tax. Okay. I'm not for a lower tax on big business. I mean, I feel like we should definitely we definitely shouldn't be trying to point out something that has such high has such a high tax rate to run its country because what it's trying to do is take a bunch of stuff away from you and then go give half of that stuff back to you and give the other half of that to people in need. It's basically what that system is doing. But there's like ideas behind it that like make sense. You know what I mean? Like what? Like, human compassion and, like, unity. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't let the... You gotta attend to the widows and the orphans. You don't let the poor people in your society who are stuck at zero die. That's the whole point. That's why there's things... <laughs> That's like, the whole point. And, yes, I'm not trying... What I'm trying to say, or what I'm not trying to say, is that every socialist belief... Is it's funny how belief. everybody... All the conservatives on YouTube will say, like, Oh, these socialists are communists. Even though they're not even really socialists. I'm not calling them communist. And they think that, like, oh, the system... Like, they always mention... Okay, so if you say s socialism in an argument on the internet, what you're going to get in response... It is communism. <laughs> no, what you're going to get in response is somebody's going to mention Venezuela. All you have to do when they say that is you say, no, Sweden. Like, uh, that's all you have to do. Because we're not looking to be emulating Venezuela. We're looking to emulate the Scandinavians. It's like... Yeah, but they they think that we want something we don't. Swedish socialism isn't. It's it ironic. Is, it's it still isn't a good system. It's ironic when you have people saying that your ideas are going to lead to starvation when literally all they're going to do is stop it. Like, <laughs> it's funny. It's ironic. I mean, I'm not. Sweden probably does have a better designed economic socialism than Venezuela has. I'll, I'll give you No that. shit. Like, that's I'll, not I'll hard that. to notice. I'll give you that. But I mean... Because <laughs> it's not socialism, it's social democracy. It, it's a, still a society that isn't... They, their economic system still isn't as good or as a more competitive system like capitalism could be, though. It is capitalism. It's just not... Like, a, it's a, not a stronger capitalism. It's not 100% free market capitalism is what you're trying to say. Yeah. Because 100% free market capitalism is fucking dangerous. That's like robber barons. Like, see what I'm, see what I'm talking about? They, Sargon of Akkad smeared her as a communist, bro. Because mm -hmm. he's disingenuous. I hate Sargon now. I used to like think like, oh, like like a year ago, like all those, the, uh, young all those Kurt's people. Guy. I was like, oh, they make sense. Like these like centrist skeptic YouTubers, you know. Like the new atheist movement, like six years ago, or even longer, like eight, nine years ago, like on YouTube, morphed into like the skeptic community now. Which like, skeptics, they're not really. They're like center right wingers, like. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, the classical liberal people, it kind of morphed into that. And it's super ironic now because, like, it's like they looked at the Christians and they were like, there's flaws there. And then they looked at, like, <clears throat> the leftists and they, like, saw the same shit, but they got it wrong. Like, they looked at it and they got the wrong impression. Because, like, demographically, you could blame this on the fact that they're kind of all, like, white men. Like, <laughs> like... It's like the white men's struggle, almost, that they're trying to talk about. It's weird. It's really odd. <laughs> but, I mean, random question, because I honestly don't So they don't come up this. with shitty emotional arguments that don't argue well with real, like, <clears throat> people who believe in, like, racial equality. Like, if you watch Sargon talk to somebody like Destiny. Sargon's the guy from uh, the, Young Turks, right? No. That's, that's Jane Huger. Oh. Sargon hates Young Turks. 
Let me pull up a fucking picture of him real fast. He looks really funny. He looks exactly the way that you would expect somebody who makes videos like this would look. <laughs> He's got like the beard and the, you know what I mean? He's like kind of overweight. That's not him, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I always wanted to have like a guy <clears throat> in here who was like, I would just be like, like, you know, uh, Joe Rogan has young Jamie. I'd be like, hey, pull that up. And then they could pull up like an image. Yeah. That's what I want. You know what that actually is? Is he's an audio engineer for Joe. Yeah. That's what he does. Other than just like run the live stream and upload the videos. Like he runs the whole YouTube channel. It's pretty weird. Like that. It's like, pretty. Like Rogan doesn't even touch his own account. It's fun. Yeah, it seems <laughs> like an awesome job. <laughs> <laughs> he just comes in and talks and then like he has his new studio now that with like the float tanks and the virtual archery game and shit. Yeah. And the pool table. Mm-hmm. We need to go on Rogan. That People be, watching, get us to Rogan. That'd be an honor. I'll sit across from him and Nick will sit in like that seat over there, bro. Fuck you. <laughs> no, that's what I would want. Like, that's how we would set it up. Or maybe you could sit in the other seat next to him. Maybe he'd let us do that. Yeah. Dude, it'd be so cool if you were sitting next to Joe Rogan and I'm sitting across from you guys. That'd be badass. I mean, I feel like Rogan would probably want you because you share a lot of... I feel like you share a lot of uh, beliefs with Rogan. Yeah, definitely. The well, feet. he's, like, a key influence in my, like, thought. Yeah. Like, I watch him often, so. Understandably, he's a very, very intelligent man. Yeah. He understands the issues with, like, the war on drugs and, like, <clears throat> like the bad immigration policies and shit like that. Like, he's actually kind of, like, a libertarian left guy who, like, has the appearance of a libertarian right guy. Yep. Because you look at him and you 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 could think like a lot of stereotypical shit about him, because he's like a beefcake, and he's bald, and he's white, and he's like Italian white, so he has like that square face, like <laughs> aggressive aggressive look about him. So you could think like, oh, this guy's a fucking Trump supporter, like on first glance, but he really isn't. He's like the complete opposite of that, like stereotypical dumbass American family person, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> like he's actually one of the good ones. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're one of the good ones, too. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know about me. Maybe you I don't know about me. No, I think you are. Because you're... All the bad shit that, like, people stereotype about Christian people, you really aren't those things. Like, you're not actually homophobic anymore. <laughs> I used to be pretty homophobic. I'll we'll give you that. You know, like, you're not, like, a disrespectful asshole proselytizing Christian guy. You just have your own belief system. Like, that's not that's not offensive to anybody, you know? Yeah. Or at least it shouldn't be, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't, I don't want to offend people, but I, I, I want to point out stuff that I believe that they're wrong about. Yeah, and you shouldn't get dogpiled on just for believing in shit. Yeah, definitely. That's something I disagree with, the new atheist types about as well like people like the amazing atheists like tj kirk you know him yep they seem to think that like if somebody's religious they're just an absolute dumbass instantly and you should just like not listen to anything they say that's like kind of the attitude so it's kind of ironic when then they condemn like sjw's for thinking the same way about anybody who's right of center yeah it's like well you do the same shit to religious people so yeah i mean <laughs> I feel like there's definitely Christians out there that don't uh, follow the stereotypical Christian. Well, what it is is it's a reaction. Am I right? Because like, the the really militant atheists are a reaction to the fact that like, a lot of Christians absolutely hate atheists. I mean, Christians aren't supposed to hate anyone. But they do though. They they, they, do. they, they and they all they also will dog whistle you and they'll say something like that. They'll be like, "Oh, I hate the sinner, not the sin, or hate the sin, not the sinner." It's like, yeah, but you still act as though like, I mean, you I, still do shitty things. I think a lot. Like, of, <laughs> I think a lot of people who say they're Christians, a lot of people who are would are would be higher up in churches, I guess, uh, say they're Christians and then know like the stereotypical Christian stuff. That you need to know to get up to a higher position in church. Yeah. In a church. But then they just stop there and don't ever read again. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Well. Because the Bible will say a lot of different shit from what a lot of Christians will say. If you have the same belief system that you had when you were born and you've been like, you're like that type of Christian and you're indoctrinated, 
you probably don't even think about it that much. So your opinions aren't well formed. Mm -hmm. That's why people go from religious to atheists is because they don't even really have any back of their mind reason to believe it in the first place. So then like something comes along, you're like, wait, that makes more sense, you know? But some of them don't reach that point because they're, they have like, I don't know, they have like a weird system in their brain that's like against that, but they can't tell why, you know? I mean, <laughs> that's what I notice. I mean, I, I read a lot of, uh, you know I'm a person that likes to read. You've seen me read. How yeah. I, read. I re like more than I do. If, I just read on the internet. If I, if I have nothing to read, I usually go to the Bible to read. Yeah. And I read books like Job. Even though it's like super... Not proper. not proper English. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but I mean, it's super lost in translation. Like, you also gotta think they used a different style of speaking during that time too. Yeah, and it's also been through like Arabic to Greek to Latin to English. Yeah, you know, you know. What? Actually, speaking of Greek and translating the Bible, you know what? One argument that I'll, I feel like <coughs> certain atheists, certain uh, dumber uh, atheists, share. Okay. The fact that unicorn the unicorns are talked about in the Bible. Yeah, because you'll see like memes, like you know the atheist memes of like these are all the creatures talk about in the Bible. There's like a dragon on there. I'm like, I don't remember that. <laughs> like they they <laughs> vaguely talk about a beast, not a dragon in well, Revelation. Yeah, there's yeah the whore Babylon comes in. She's riding a fucking dragon. She's riding she's riding a a winged beast. Never states Which is it's a dragon. Pretty much a dragon. Never though. states it's a dragon. I mean, it's from hell. Also, like in the Christian mythology, Lucifer is the dragon. He's the evil guy. Yeah. So, they are mentioned. But like, the unicorns specifically, unicorns specifically. If you think about it, it was originally translated from. It goes from like ah Hebrew to Egyptian to Greek to stuff, and all through a bunch of different religions, right? Okay. So. <laughs> Egyptians, they didn't have a word for, um, you know how in Egypt and through parts of Africa you'll find rhino? Yeah. Egyptians, uh, oh. when they were talking, when they were originally writing the Bible, they said a horned <laughs> beast, right? Right, right, A yeah. horned, so when it got translated further, I want to say it was... Maybe the Hebrews. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Don't quote me. Uh, they didn't have a word for beast, so they. Ju but they'd had a word for buffalo. Okay. So they said a horned buffalo to describe it, and then when it got translated through Greek, Greeks don't know. Didn't have a word for buffalo, <laughs> so buffalo became horse. That's ridiculous. And that's why it talks about horned horses. Horned horses in the Bible. That's fair. <laughs> Dude, but, like, there's some weird shit in there. Yeah. Like, the part where, that Rogan always talks about where there's a guy who's bald and a bunch of kids are making fun of the bald guy and then he, he's, like, a man of God and they made fun of the wrong dude, so he calls upon a bunch of she-bears to slaughter the whole group of people. Like, what? God sent bears to kill kids for making fun of a bald man. It's like, what? You know? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know it either, but like they looked it up, and apparently it's real. Uh, I didn't know about a passage that said anything like that. Well, this dude, it, it, it's big. It's a big book. There's a lot of shit in that yeah. book. So I mean, no I, one, no one knows a whole thing by heart. I've I mean. read most of Genesis. I've read all of Job. I've read all of Proverbs. And well, that's the songs. thing. They tell you to read certain parts of it. So it's like, what if I just start at the beginning and end it at the end? What would I find? You know, I mean, <laughs> I I jump through books because like I've read most of the gospels. Which yeah, the, okay. gos the gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah, and then I've read most of Paul's letters. I'm a gospel, so <laughs> I'm a prophet. Shut I'm the, the fuck up! <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I am the savior, like literally. I'm here to the spread the savior. I'm here to spread the good word of atheism <laughs> of fucking. God is dead in ism. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Nietzsche the other year. Oh, now I gotta put that in the title. <laughs> we'll be like, oh, when, when, when do they talk about Nietzsche? It's like... <laughs> uh, 
Every edgy 19-year-old's N-I-E-T-C-S-E-H-E. favorite philosopher. N-I-E-T-C-S-E-H-E. Not that any motherfucker like my name and the spelling be... Yep. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hard word to, pron- to spell and, or pronounce, it's honestly. A, it's a tough name. Nietzsche. <laughs> Imagine all the... All the, like, edgy philosopher, bro... Type, t- type, type dads who... <laughs> They have kids and they name them Friedrich. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, that day was my name Friedrich. <laughs> Some kid today called me the white rice man. Dude, you sound like you're being molested. <laughs> I mean, maybe he is. I mean, what if what if his dad was a philosopher bro Christian man and he sends him off to church and gets diddled by a per- priest? That would be Catholicism, dude. Catholicism is Christianity. It's just Catholicism is the biggest sect of Christianity. It's not prostitute. Protestant. Protestant. Pro- <laughs> Not prostitute. Prostitute. Prostitutes. That's what. Jesus would hang with them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, there's literally parts in the Bible where Jesus just chills out with prostitutes. Yeah. It's funny. You would spend company with the sinners, right? That's yeah. That's his whole deal. There's also parts where it talks about him going to a big, famous, fucking uh, church type thing. Yeah. And all of the... Uh, clerics and shit were just like selling shit inside the fucking church and making money for themselves. And Jesus just goes in there and starts fucking flipping tables. Yeah, I remember. I remember being taught that actually in like first grade. Yep. I was like, whoa, Jesus was like a, a fire Jesus was guy. a badass. <laughs> just went in there and started flipping shit. Literally, talks about him fucking healing the blind and. The- uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The sickly? No. Like, like dumb? When somebody can't walk, I'm forgetting what the fuck it's called. Crippled? Entire... Yeah. Well, no, you forgot no. the word crippled? <laughs> Not crippled, specifically. It's like... The paralyzed. lame! The paralyzed. The, the lame. paralyzed. I guess that's a good word for it. Like, that's what they used to say. That's probably what it says in the Bible. No, I don't think it says that. I think it just says the broken. The broken ones. Well, that could be emotional, too. Yeah, he just goes and heals a bunch of depressed people. Just crowd of depression. <laughs> Walks up to Jesus. Jesus is just like, yo, I'm going to turn like water into wine and y'all be fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, fuck. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you know Evan? Evan Hutchinson? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, recently, like, I can't remember what day because, you know, short-term memory problems. Uh <laughs> Put it, put it, put it in a, put it in a sober way. Um, <laughs> we were hanging out, and somehow we were with like a group of people, and one of them was like this guy, who was like older than us. Yeah, he's like twenty four, twenty five. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. And as he's kept talking, I realized like, oh, this guy, like, he said a bunch of shit that really roped Evan in in the beginning. It was like, oh yeah, like. Like, life shit, but as he kept talking and rambling, because Evan, like, didn't have the wherewithal to actually interrupt him, I guess. Yeah. He revealed to me, like, oh, this guy's kind of crazy. Like, he was talking about how, um, Donald Trump is the savior who will bring about Jesus' will. What the fuck? And, like, how rappers use satanic imagery in their music and have, like, on their tattoos, and that means that they're, like, representatives of demons and shit. What the fuck? Like, like, one of those types of Christian guys. I hate those. He would keep, he would keep talking about, like... I call those I call those types of people crypto-Christian... Christianities. Or cri- crypto-Christians. I call those types of people crypto-fascists, but... <laughs> <laughs> but you also gotta take into account... But anybody who's really a crypto-Christian is pretty much a fascist anyway. Yeah, exactly! They're theologists. They think that, like, God is the savior of, like, government... But it's retarded. But Evan wasn't seeing it as as much bullshit as I was seeing it as, because he's a Christian, he believes in that. So yeah, it was like hard for me to not speak up. Cause you notice what those types of religious people do is they'll act like they're the perfect version of that. Yeah. Like they know everything about it. Arrogant. Like you know what I mean. Like he was like. 
he was saying things, he was sh so sure of himself about, like, Jesus and shit that are clearly all, like, his own subjective beliefs. Like, they're not, but he took them as fact. And it's like, those type of people are the types of people why we need the strong atheists is because those types of people still fucking exist and they just walk around influencing others. Like, <laughs> yep, we need someone to just shout in their faces that they're incorrect. Like, I mean... <laughs> I hate, I hate crypto Christians. Why do you call them that? Because crypto means, like, hidden, right? I mean, I, I the reason I call them crypto Christians... They're definitely not hidden. Like, this yeah. guy just started talking about this. It was the first time he met me. Like, <laughs> because, it's like, it's supposed to be, like, conspiracy theorist type thing. Yeah. Like, he's, that's like yeah. the Alex Jones of Christians, basically. Dude, Alex Jones does so much pandering to, like, the religious right. It's not even funny nowadays. He's basically like a propaganda machine for them. Yep. Because he'll just fuel all that shit. Because you know what they want, right? They want... Somebody will tell them that they're right. No, like, worldview-wise, you know what they think is good? Is they think that, like, the Jews take the Holy Land, which is why they're pro-war, is because they want us to kill all the Muslims and the Jews come in. And they're very pro-Israel, too. And that this is why. It's religious. They want revelations to happen sooner. They want the Jews to have the Holy Land, which means Jesus comes back, kills all the non-Christians. These people are literally, in their beliefs, they're genocidal. And takes them up to I heaven. Mean, Jesus. They, in their beliefs, they, are, they literally like want everyone except them to die. Like That's what they believe in. That's what they want it to happen. It doesn't say that Jesus does it, though. It says after the seals are, the final seal is broken. Doesn't matter if it doesn't say. Uh, it's fire, the, fire. I think it does. That's fire, what they say. They they believe that fire will rain down upon the earth and kill one third of the non Christian population. Well, eventually, everyone who doesn't get taken up in the rapture dies, right? No. 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 Only two thirds of the people die. <laughs> Why the fuck aren't there other dead people? It's the because, end of the world. Because the other, the other third. <laughs> Are going would create like make up the twelve tribes of Judah. What the fuck is that? The twelve tribes of Jerusalem. Are they all Jews? N well, Wait, they, does God take all the Christians, kill all the atheists and Muslims, and then save all the Jews? No. Is that what happens? No. <laughs> because like during uh, during the rapture, like it's all Christians and all anybody who had who believes it, I guess in their heart. That Jesus is their savior. Yeah. Is taken up until the rapture. Right. Now, the rapture has never stated that it all happens at once. It just says that all Christians will eventually be taken up into heaven, right? But the idea is it just happens instantly in people's, like, shoes or Yes, whatever. but it never says that in the Bible. <laughs> that's just a, that's a, that's a biblical misconception. Okay. That's what that is. I don't think it matters, though, because people still think it. Yeah, it's but it's a misconception. That's what I'm trying to point out. That not all all Christians are taken up at are supposed to be taken up at the same time because certain ones are supposed to become leaders of the twelve tribes of Juba, Judah and bring the people that didn't die during Revelations to Christianity so they can then live on Earth with for ten thousand years with Jesus after Revelations because Jesus is supposed to bring the heavens down to Earth to those dudes. What about yeah. all the people who die? All the people, all the people who are. <laughs> That's would, my problem. People still die. All the people who would be uh. in heaven would be brought down, because heaven would come to earth, basically. And this is all like afterlife thinking, though. It's bullshit. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to explain <laughs> the basics of revelations. I'm not saying. I but still, believe, like. I'm not saying I believe half this shit. I'm just saying, I'm trying to explain. It doesn't it. make it better. <laughs> It doesn't make it better that these people think Donald Trump is the fucking savior. I'm not saying that they are right in there. And they, th they, 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 they want, they want the Palestinians to be wiped out. They want everyone to die. I mean, they, the, the they actually that, think the capital of Israel should be Jerusalem. They actually want that. They think, um, the thing that pisses me off about a lot of them is that they that all Islam and all the Muslim belief is is just the third kind of sect of Abraham. Yeah, that's yeah. People don't get it. They're Be, they're serving the of, same yeah, fucking god. A lot of those like <laughs> people are just hating on people that basically 
believe that believe in the same God except by a different Bible, basically. But they see if, they see each other as if they're less than human. That's the problem. They actually do. Like Muslims yeah. fucking hate people who don't agree with them and their belief systems. And Christians do too. They just don't cut their heads off. They just don't cut their heads off. Because they act in a more civilized way about it. But it's like, if you do things like the poor people or like start wars, that's still kind of like, or like suppress them, like take over their land and shit. That's still kind yeah. of like killing them. Like, I mean, the thing that kind of annoys me <laughs> about that whole situation, that like, I hate people who, I hate Christians that hate Muslims. Basically. Yeah, uh, that just pisses me off because it's stupid. Muslims just believe or believe in the same God, just by a different. Ju- just believe Jesus wasn't the son of God. And they just think he was a major prophet, and whereas they think Muhammad's the son of God, right? Mm-hmm. Muhammad, and Christians believe Jesus was the son of God, and the Jews believe that Jesus hasn't come yet. Basically, yeah, they're like, no, there's no absolute son of God. That's not a thing, like. Nah. Well, the Jews are the people that believe that um, Jesus just wasn't the Son of God. They right. Just, son of God. They just he, was, he, was he was a age prophet. He was, an, he was another prophet, which, honestly, that's more of a realistic viewpoint. Than... So you're saying <laughs> that, like, but they also believe that Jesus, like, a person like Jesus is still coming. Well, historians will tell you that Jesus was a bunch of different people in uh, one combined myth. And that's what all the prophets are. It's like a bunch of people will say one thing and like, you know, will be the voice of God. And well, then it'll, the, be, it'll be written down and transcribed as if it was one guy. A lot of the earlier <laughs> prophets in the Old Testament are just supposed to be like pushing metaphors. That's what the Old Testament is. Yeah. I don't know if I want to get into all this right now. I don't want to steer off into a religion conversation because, like, I have issues with that. Yeah. Because we fundamentally disagree, like, literally at the bottom of our belief structure. Yeah. There's, like, disagreement, so it's hard to get, like, past that in the conversation. Mm-hmm. I mean... That's why I can't debate Mac anymore, Nick. Like, I, I just <laughs> got out of, a, out of a Christian camp, and I really am tired of arguing theology. Yeah, things, well... So. well I just want to know if you're, if you can, like, describe, like, how those conversations work, like, inner Christian infighting, like, what? <laughs> Usually, that sounds interesting. Inner Christian infighting, well, that's when uh, different sects of Christianity, different sects of Protestantism, uh, split off. That's why you have Baptist and you have Adventist yeah. and you have, um, di- all the different versions of Christian, where like, because, just for example. And a lot of uh, and a lot of these disagreements and disbeliefs are over stupid shit, like <laughs> honestly, really, it's really just stupid shit. Like fucking Adventist, the biggest disagreement between Adventist and Baptist is between this thing called soul sleep, which is basically your body is put, in, you're like your soul after it leaves your body after you die sits over your body and it's what gotta sit over your body until the second coming of Jesus, basically in limbo. Whereas Baptists believe that soul sleep isn't a thing, and that as soon as you die, you're, you're, after three days, your soul ascends into heaven. Because that's okay. what the Jews believe. Yeah, that is pretty dumb. Right? It's like, what's the difference, though? Like, why are you even arguing about that? It, it has no point to argue. <laughs> that's the thing that annoys me between different yeah, sects of Christianity. Yeah, I bet they get all dramatic. Like, the thing about it is, like, the, those, they don't understand that they're performing. Like, priests... It's theatrical, and they're basically wearing dresses. Like, t- <laughs> I mean, it's it's a it's a performance. Catholic priest. Like, it's a performance. A lot of priests nowadays don't wear those nice, those like really fucking long, Catholic fucking. Well, robes. yeah, you see a lot of preachers wearing just like suits. Yeah, because they want to look more Americana, because they're more like nationalist in their messaging. I, I mean, could, I could talk about that for hours, but I feel like I should get like, like on another show, I'll do like some theological shit yeah with another atheist maybe i mean i feel like it, we should definitely have conversations on the show where we talk about or how we de- actually like debate our yeah yeah well or not even something what i was trying to say not even so much debate is like how philosophy affects theology too 
Yeah. Well, theology is basically philosophy of religion, right? Yeah, basically. Religious philosophy, so, yeah. Or just blanket statement of how religion and philosophy are intermingled. Because they are. It's like that, and also politics is in there as well. And then yep. you have like a little bit of culture, like social shit. Social culture. And that's the world we live in, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, and also like economic systems. Yeah. I mean, we. I feel like we should also talk about like the history of different philosophies as well. Yeah. Like different times equal different philosophies. Like you got the Renaissance that has very Victorian philosophy. You know what I'm saying? And then you have... Greco, yes. Then you have Greco-Roman, which has a lot of, you know, Greco-Roman philosophy. Right, right. <laughs> Love that word. Or a combination of words. Greco-Roman. Greco-Roman. Gecko-Roman. <laughs> um, we can probably hear that. <laughs> my mom and my dog. Yo. 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 Probably, yo. What? Nothing. What? Nothing. <laughs> okay. But um, god damn it. What else is going on in the world, Nick? What else is going on in the world? I feel um, like I just derailed things somehow. Yeah, a little bit. What is going on in the world, Matthew? That's a good question. What world are we talking about? Are we taking this to a deeper level than just the physical world? Well, of course we are. Because that's more fun. Of course it's more fun. I I really feel like I look Italian. A little bit. What are you, even? I'm Scottish, Native. I'm a Scottish, Native American, Irish, and Norwegian. I'm basically just, like, French mixed with English. Yep. Kind of funny. Dark skin's my native side. Dave Rubin. Is he... <laughs> actually, no, that would have been he, true. He's Dave actually Rubin gay. <laughs> he's actually a fag. Um, David Joshua Rubin. He was associated with Sargon in here. That's Thunderfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Anita Sarkeesian. How do you feel about her? Mm, most of these people I kind of just hate. Yeah? Well, you don't hate Dave, do you? I mean, I find... Do you actually hate Dave? I feel like Dave has... How do I put this? No virtue towards his beliefs. Well, a lot of people on the left think that he switched to being more of a right winger for that sweet Koch brothers money. Mm -mm. Possibly. Uh. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> that's why I'm saying he has no virtue to his beliefs. Right. That's why I said that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because you know he's got this one issue. I don't want to cut you off, but he's got this one issue about being anti SJW, anti political correctness. And all of all of his guests, everybody he gets on the show shares that same thought process and like in a conspiracy theory type way about like cultural Marxism, like all that Jordan Peterson stuff. That's all he really seems to care about. I mean, I think I, I agree with IDubs' belief on political correctness. Which is basically like fuck it, like I mean, yeah, like if you you can't just take a couple specific Items is actually really intelligent. Yeah, you can't take you can't just take a couple specific terms and put them higher than the rest of the yeah words. Because what he said in the in those videos about like his use of like slurs and shit is that words only have the power you give them, and he's actually not wrong about that. So basically, what he's pushing for is almost like this post society view of like just say everything because we're all equal and we all know that. Yeah. I like it. But the issue with that thought process, I think, to a lot of, like, more progressive social types is that it discounts the actual world we live in where people are actually marginalized, you know? Yeah. It just, like, skips the whole step of fixing that issue. I mean, I feel like a lot of leftist beliefs have that, too, though. They miss the real world issue. Like what? Like... 
for example, socialism. <laughs> yeah. I kind of should have known you would say that. <laughs> I want to do, like, a video about, just about, like, leftist economic philosophy. Just, like, un- Yeah, and I want to do one on unbiased right philosophy. Are you going to talk about, like, Ayn Rand and shit? Maybe. Like, libertarian economics? Libertarian right economics. And you could do libertarian left economics. Dude, but libertarian right economics is really, like sketchy because like you get to a point where it's like okay who's gonna build the roads like (laughs) yeah but i mean i'm I'm going to point out the what i want to do is i want to take the libertarian right economic belief and point out stuff that's great and we should keep in it and point out stuff that's shit and we should throw away okay i might just talk about theoretical marxist bullshit mine yeah (laughs) see i feel like if we're gonna make something that talks about a specific thing we should pick it apart and say, oh, this thing benefits a certain philosophy and this thing uh, destroys the certain philosophy. Mm-hmm. And it's pros and it's cons and stuff like that. Well, what's interesting, like, when I took government last year, there was a debate he set up with, this was like the first thing, first day in there, I watched, like, he gave them all philosophers that mm-hmm. were important in the foundation of the American structure. One of them was Marx. One of them was Hobbes, and then there was, like, Plato and somebody else. And it was marked the Marxist was versus Greek? the Hob- Hobbesian. So it was, like, monarchism versus Marxism. Yeah. Which was interesting to watch. Like, Did monarchism win? No. Actually, the Marxists won the wow. debate. Damn. Because the people arguing for Hobbes' point of view didn't use the essential argument of human nature and competition... Which yep. is exactly what you need to do to win a debate against a Marxist, is you use that argument. They didn't even yeah. touch that argument. So, I was back there kind of cringing, but I voted for the Marxists to win anyway, because they argue better. Yeah. I mean, one thing I feel like would definitely be interesting, though, is if with some of our videos, like, because we're talking about how me and you could each make separate videos, and then we could have certain shows for to both of us, right? Definitely, yeah. I feel like we should definitely each have shows where we pick apart each other's beliefs on the, mm. our own shows. Well, we could just say, like, in a side note, like, according to Nick, blah, 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 blah. Like, <laughs> dude, we could do, like, passive-aggressive little shots at each other. Like, yeah. that'd be funny as fuck. I mean, I've done. I did that with Matt's Monday Morning podcast. Yeah. So, it was a lot of it was a lot of cuck shaming. Yeah. <laughs> which Definitely is which cuck. is okay because cucks like being shamed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick McGinnis completely destroys cuck. <laughs> and new new abstract thinking episode. Dude, we we might rope in some like Jordan Peterson fans into this. They're gonna like this show. I feel we like talk, we talk. This is the free marketplace of ideas. Yep. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do well for ourselves, even though I am a cock lord. I feel Fine. like I feel like I just say yup a lot. I feel like I'm a I'm a yupper. Yup. Yup. Like that guy on whatever that show was, Storage Wars. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> it's like okay, dude. <laughs> but. I have visions in the future of good, good, good shit on this channel. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like you can make videos at your house, bro. You can just upload them if you want. Yeah, I know. I I definitely feel like we are going to get a lot of the more, I guess you could say, abstract thinking. Yeah, people. More of the free marketplace of ideas, like cent- center right or center left people. I mean, I feel like people who love watching people of the intellectual dark web like us. Hopefully. Hopefully we'll be inducted. Yeah, I want to be inducted into the intellectual the, dark The youngest dark intellectual web. dark web members. Yep. <laughs> it's cool, because you don't even have to be, like, free market capitalist to be in there. Because, like, Brett Weinstein is kind of a socialist, isn't he? A little bit. He's very much a progressive dude. Yep. Which is why it's interesting to see him talk to Jordan Peterson, because Jordan Peterson is very anti-that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is where we disagree in a lot of things. Is Jordan Peterson part of the intellectual dark? Yeah, world? he's one of the key figures. Because I knew it was Brett and Eric Weinstein, right? Yeah, and Peterson and Shapiro, yep. Ruben and Rogan. That's like the six. Oh. The Sinister Six. Which is 
it's it's cool. See, I thought it was just after the Weinsteins of a Shapiro, uh, Rogan, Ruben, and think about Peterson being in it. Oh, there's a picture of I'd, them all like eating dinner. <laughs> I'd love to <laughs> meet. I'd love to have a show with Jordan Peterson. Me fucking too, bro. He's like my dream to talk to. Where is the picture I'm looking for? I feel like they're all just gonna like. It's gonna be like the Doctor from Doctor Who. They're all like eating steak and shit. Eating dinner. Eating steak. <laughs> oh, I just got a text. Where the fuck is the picture? Oh, right here. I gotta make that bigger. Or we'll just go to Rogan's Instagram, maybe. Yeah, DW goes to dinner. <laughs> it's really funny. Because they're all like, they're awkward looking, aren't they? Yeah, Sam Harris is over here. Rogan's got his arm around him, actually. Look, Shapiro's like awkwardly smiling. They all kind of are. Where's Brett? Brett's not even there. I think Brett's behind. Uh, Maybe. Ruben Shapiro. Apparently, Pearson's wife was there too, but she wasn't like... In the picture? In the, yeah. Shapiro, I'll have, I'll have the burger, okay? No cheese, no bacon. <laughs> He's talking super fast. This is completely scuff, guys. My wife's a, my wife's a doctor. That's hilarious. <laughs> I think I'll call my or order into being through speech, because, like, that's what it means to be an individual. Like, seriously. Peterson... <laughs> It's total chaos. <laughs> what can you do about that? I can totally hear that in his voice. Maybe you can make it a little bit better. And then Sam Harris is arguing with him. Rogan is like, I don't know about all that, but here's the thing. I just read the study. It basically says if you take DMT in a sensory deprivation tank every day, your life's campaign can actually be doubled. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Double. Jamie, pull up that video of the chimp fighting a wolf. <laughs> That's wonderful. Ruben, I'm just happy to be here, guys. That's ah. an awesome meme. I, I feel like that. I agree with Harris a lot. I agree in principle. <laughs> <laughs> I agree in principle, Jordan. But the problem is, that's exactly me in an argument. I like how Rogan just completely diverts like he does in his podcast to fucking DMT <laughs> and like random shit. He has like a set amount of things in his like mind where it's just like if the dice is rolling too much in a conversation he brings that up <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> it's amazing but i like the way jordan pearson talks a lot i also like the my wife's a doctor meme yeah and it's also kind of funny how eric weinstein is saying nothing in this whole <laughs> meme like <laughs> mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah isn't that just, like, kind of odd, though? This is a bunch of, like, 40, 50-year-old, like, YouTube commentator types just kind of going, having a steak. Yeah. Like, what do you think they talked about, actually, at this dinner? Probably, like, I don't know, their lives or some shit. They just talked like bros, is what yeah. I imagine. Basically. That's, like, the most awesome group of minds, though, like... I mean, minus Ruben... I'm, I wasn't gonna be a dick about it. I I'd I'd love to go on Ruben, bro. Yeah. You wouldn't you wouldn't I mean, want to talk to him? I'd, I'd, I would love I'd talking. Didn't, to I'd him. enjoy being on Ruben. Don't get me wrong, but if that that's not gonna stop me from like roasting the shit out of them. <laughs> yeah. Over their like bad political beliefs. Yeah. Well, you know when he went on Rogan's show, he was literally just talking about like free market capitalism, like completely free. Like, no regulation at all. He was basically talking about anarcho-capitalism. And Rogan was like, wait a second. But you need people to, like, build shit that runs. Like, you yeah. <laughs> Socio-anarchism. <laughs> uh, bro, I gotta go soon. Alright, well, we'll wrap it up soon. I don't even know what I'm gonna do after that. I mean, we got our first episode done. Yeah, you want to make some? You want to make a video this week? Yeah. By yourself or something? Probably. I might soon. I'm just figuring out like what exactly I want to do, and I want to have another like podcast type format. I mean, the thing that we'd have like three or four of those. Yeah. Long term discussions, because that's what people are tuning in to hear, if they if they listen to shit like that. Yeah. 
The thing that pisses me off, really, though, is the fact that you're, like, one of my own, like, the only people, if not the only person in this town that I have intellectual conversation with. Because, pretty sure Mr. Carver and, like, all of the intellectual teachers at our school just despise me. <laughs> I don't think, I don't, I severely doubt that Mr. Carver despises you, bro. He doesn't hate you. That's false. That's fake news. <laughs> That's fake news. <laughs> doesn't hate any of us. It's fake news. I bet he kind of hates us all in a way. Yeah, he does. Like, oh, he definitely does. Like, the fact that he had to deal with all of us our fucking sophomore year, yeah, he does. Yeah, we're crazy, too. We're, we, were, we were cunts. We are. Those are bad words. <laughs> Don't say cunts. <laughs> Don't say cunts. <laughs> I can say cunt all I want, Nick. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, absolutely. I mean, you have you have the ability and you have the freedom to say cunts, but that doesn't make it a good thing to doesn't say cunts. Doesn't make it morally acceptable. <laughs> I'm trying to make this sarcastic. What do you think about morality? You think it's subjective? I think it's 100% subjective. There's no objective moral. I mean... Because people do shitty things. Yeah. And they think it's okay. So there's no objective moral. Because somebody out there thinks that murder should be... Somebody out there thinks murder is good. Someone. In some way, shape, or form. I mean, depends on the victim, I think. Damn. <laughs> I'm completely against death. I, I mean, I, I feel like there's certainly some crimes that deserve death penalty. I don't think so. I think you know why I don't think so? It's a libertarian argument. You might like it. It's because I don't think the government should be allowed to kill human beings legally. Yeah, but I, I feel like it, there are certain people that honestly deserve to be lynched, not even so much killed by the government. Lynched is a weird word, because that's what happened to black people. <laughs> people are going to be like, oh, Nazi Nick is at it again. Like, honestly, <laughs> I, I feel like more of the people that deserve to get lynched are white, to be honest. Okay. To be honest. Who do you think deserves to be lynched, bro? Fucking like... It's also a specific way of doing things. Fucking like the Lynching people them. the people that are known to be parts of things... Of groups that used to lynch people. Okay, so you th- you're for lynching KKK members? Kind of. I'm not even for that. I think we should just argue with them till they fade into obscurity. I feel like... I feel the same way about the Nazis. I, 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 I don't even think so much like the KKK, though, because the KKK, yes, they have their freedom of speech. So they're not killing anybody anymore, so I don't think exactly any of them deserve to get lynched. Even though they believe in white ethno state. Yeah. <laughs> Which is gonna end up. But until until they practice, until they end up getting violent, until they end up getting to like a mass murdering scale. Yeah, I think yes, we should argue with them. We should have intellectual conversation with them. Yeah. But I definitely think there is a point that you can go to that where you deserve to get lynched. Yeah, like Hitler deserved to get lynched. I don't know. I w- I don't know, man. I think there's going to be a point in my life where it's I more deserve compl- to get lynched. It's more complicated than deserved, because there's no objective morality, so how do you decide who deserves? Fair enough. <laughs> I had to debate death penalty in government class, actually, speaking of that, and I won. Good for you? Yep. See, I win them all. And I, fuck you. No Hopefully you Nick will beat me one day. Fuck but you. We haven't been, like, against each other. Have we? We did, I feel like we didn't. Yet. We we did the Jefferson debate, but I was really arguing more with my own team than you. I, that I forgot you were on their team, bro. Totally. Because fucking, I would be trying to make a point against you, and then Solen would could just completely cancel out my point. Yeah, I and mean, it was so easy to argue with her because she was in tears. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I was the only one on my team, bro. I yeah. had Alexis there. She was unprepared. She wasn't doing anything. She was just sitting there in silence. And Zach was like, oh, I'm coming. I'm on my way. And he didn't fucking go to school. So. Fucking, it just pissed me off because, like, I was the only one on my team that was actually making points against you. So. Yeah, but, dude, it's kind of funny, though, because I don't even remember that part. <laughs> I don't even remember you being there. Yeah, it's because fucking Selin was in that's tears. The, that's the funny Selin was in tears canceling out my points. I completely owned her. Yes, yes, you did. For once in my life. I that's also like, think... That's, like, how our in- interaction as humans works, is, like, she, like, tortures me, but, like, then in debates, I just beat her to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think one of the factors that's probably the reason <laughs> why... Uh, I'm not very remembered in that argument is that the fact that half the people in that class... 
couldn't stand me. I guess, I don't know. Can they can they stand me? Half the time. I mean, but here's <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. They may not be able to stand you sometimes, but they respect you, whereas they don't respect me. Do they respect me? Yeah. Sometimes they don't. Like, you have people like Aaron, you have m- people like Mackenzie Arsenal and all them that respected you. They didn't respect me. Mackenzie Arsenal doesn't even pay attention to me, bro. The tragic story of the man-child. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I hate Reddit, guys. Is there a contradiction between embracing capitalism and lamenting the weakening of morality? Um, it's a good question. Maybe. Maybe something I'll read up on later because I, honestly, right now I don't have an answer for it. Is religion an evolutionary adaptation? Jordan Peterson I, is weird about his Christian shit. I bro. made this argument a couple days ago to you. Oh, did you? Yes. Make it again, please. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't have enough time. That would take me like a solid half an Why, hour. Why? When are you leaving? Like three minutes ago. Oh. <laughs> I need to call for my ride. You want to wrap this up? Kind of. What are we even talking about? What are we going to put in the title? Dude, you're going to have to like listen to it and just like fucking... What did we even talk about, Nick? We talked about... Like, we need specific shit. We talked about the intellectual dark web. We talked about religion. Intellectual dark web, religion, Nietzsche. <laughs> That's what's going to be in the title. Even though we didn't talk about Nietzsche, Nietzsche at all. Or Nietzsche. 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 Nietzsche's up. But what's the what's outro the for... Nietzsche. What's the fucking... What are we going to say at the end of one of these? <laughs> that was the Your Mom's Gay Podcast, guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, young... The, the IDW youth. With the... <laughs> With their, uh, what the fuck does that mean? The intellectual dark web youth, like uh, the Hitler youth, but... Oh, makes but, sense. But not Nazis? Uh, th- see, I thought when you said IDW, I thought you were like, I don't want to be youth. I do, though. Youth never dies. I'll be young forever. Keep telling yourself that one, Matthew. <laughs> I will. You already have an aging phase. Damn it. <laughs> That's a stress for you. <laughs> with this kid. Dude, with I've this got kid. fucking wrinkles. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. I'm probably more of a piece of work than you are, but (laughs) goodbye. See ya.